Hello, students and panelists, and thank you so much for joining this afternoon slash evening. Um, students, you can ask questions to the panelists at any time, and it will go directly to them. Your camera and your microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Um, we have a lot more sessions happening, so please sign up for more sessions and look at the schedule on strivescan.com. And this recording will be available in about a week at the same place where you registered. So now I will turn it over to our panelists and Lincoln Memorial, you are first. Hi, my name is Rachel Schott and I am excited to have the opportunity to tell you about Lincoln Memorial University. Uh, I have two degrees from Lincoln Memorial University myself, so, um, and I work here too. It's just a great place to be. Uh, we are a small private liberal arts institution in East Tennessee in the beautiful Appalachian Mountains. And we're about 55 miles north of Knoxville, Tennessee. Like I said, we're right in the beautiful mountains. We have about a thousand acres to our campus, give or take. We are lucky enough to have the Cumberland Gap National Park right in our backyard, which you can kind of see back there. And this is our quad, our main old historic part of our main campus. So like I said, we're a small institution in East Tennessee, right on the corner of Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Here are some things that we're especially proud of and things that I want you to know about us. We have about 5,000 students. That is 3,000 graduate students, which I'll tell you more about later. They are working on their DO or their JD. We have um, doctors, nurses, lawyers here working on degrees. And about 2,000 of our 5,000 students are undergraduates working on their first bachelor's degree in their first four years or possibly just an associate's degree for their first two year degree. So you can see here, we have about 14 students in our class, give or take, actually, I think this year it may be a little bit lower than that. Um, about 40% of our students are first generation students. We have lots of support in place for people. If you were like me, your parents didn't go to school. Uh, we have lots of people who can step into that role and help you learn the ins and outs as you need to. Here's just another shot of the campus. This is our medical school in the middle and the back is our math and science building and some of our apartment style living uh, residence halls are there in the middle. So I won't give you a big history lesson, but I will tell you we're a little proud of how we got here. We are in a very strategic part of the mountains called Cumberland Gap. And lucky for us, this area stayed loyal to the Union during the Civil War. So we were able to aid the Union Army by letting them come through that little hole in the mountains when we could have stopped them, but we didn't. So Abraham Lincoln said to one of his generals, I wish I could do something to thank the people there in rural East Tennessee. And that General O. O. Howard came back to this area and founded Lincoln Memorial University as a living memorial to Lincoln in 1897. We've been here ever since. Like I said, we're private school, we have no out of state tuition, and we are not affiliated with any particular religion or denomination. We have lots of Christian students on campus um, and some students of Muslim background as well, but our charter is based on Lincoln's life and not on any particular religious affiliation. We have about 30 undergraduate majors. Our top major is nursing. Second would be bio pre-med. I forgot to mention, we also have a veterinary college here. So we have a lot of pre-vet students um, as well as exercise science and criminology. Those are our top majors. We have residence halls from the large six person apartment style uh, to the smaller two person sort of traditional dorm that you're used to seeing in movies. And uh, we're proud of our apartment style living as well, but there's a lot of wonderful things that go on um, with the smaller, smaller uh, uh, the smaller residence halls as well. We also have lots of Greek life organizations here on campus. Here's a little bit about our athletic teams. We have 23 competitive division two teams in the South Atlantic Conference and 13 SAC regu uh, regular season crowns. Just last year, we had 85 students honored with academic achievement awards. So we're very proud of our sports teams. I don't think that's listed on here, but we also just recently added men and women's wrestling to our roster of sports. For student activities, one of my favorites is the swimming pool where we have things like movie night. You can float around with your friends and watch a movie on the big screen. 
we have Fitness Center. We also have Arts in the Gap, which is a traditional arts program based in Appalachia that we're very proud of. LMU started as a work college, so many of even the buildings that you see here on campus were built by students themselves. So lots of opportunity for students to find community service that is meaningful to them. We have a pre-vet club which goes out and looks at the shelters and helps the students. So community service is a big part of what we do and this, the community is very uh, helpful in that regard to give our students meaningful opportunities. Like I said, we have a doctor of osteopathic medicine. We also have a doctor of veterinary medicine, and we have a law school here at LMU that is number one in the state of Tennessee for the bar pass rate. So I'll give you my contact information here, and you're welcome to ask me anything that you want about our programs, especially the graduate programs. Our email address, or rather our website, is lmunet.edu. If you want to apply, you can. we have a rolling application. You can go to the top of the website and click apply now. We also have a nice chat available with uh, always manned by our admissions office. So we're here to help you. And if you can't make it to campus for a tour or a visit, please hit up our online campus experience where you can feel like you're right here with us. Again, my name is Rachel, so nice to chat with you all. And if you have any questions, this is my cell phone number and you're welcome to call or text me anytime. Thank you so much, Rachel. And up next, we have Dickinson College. Good evening, everybody. My name is Amy Hall. I am the admissions rep for Dickinson College. I'm glad to be able to join you tonight. Um, Dickinson College is a small liberal arts college in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Um, we have about 2,400 students, all undergraduates. Uh, we were founded in 1783 by Dr. Benjamin Rush. And Dr. Benjamin Rush was George Washington's personal physician, um, and he started Dickinson to be a resource for the brand new nation, to be um, what he called a place where we preserve and protect democracy. And that's the core to what we do today. Um, I know there are hundreds of liberal arts colleges out there. And so how are we different? How do you understand who Dickinson is and what Dickinson is? And we talk about a couple of different central bullet points of Dickinson, a couple of different things that make us unique. Um, the first is a very global education. Um, what that means for us is that you should experience a global education on campus and off campus. On campus, it looks like a variety of different internationally themed majors. Our business major is a true international business and management major. Our goal is when you graduate from that program, we could drop you anywhere in the world and you could do business. It's also built into our student body. Um, about 20% of our students are international students who want you to have different experiences, um, talk to people from different backgrounds, different cultures in the classroom. It makes the conversation richer, it makes it a better educational uh, experience overall. Um, and then finally, uh, the way in which we do, the last way in which we do uh, kind of global ed on campus is through the way in which we teach our classes. Two thirds of our classes are taught with a built in global component. What that means is that you should always understand in those classes why what you're doing impacts the world around you and why what is going on in the world around you impacts what you're learning. It's this two way street, it's this understanding of why what you're doing matters. You should never walk out of one of those classes and say, why did I need to know this? The other side of global education for us is study abroad. Um, about 70% of our students will study abroad as Dickinsonians. We run 18 of our own programs in 15 different countries, as you can see from this map here, all over the world. Um, we aim to be in smaller regional centers so you can have that true immersive experience. And every single student who goes abroad is required to do either an internship or community service within the, within the community they are based in. Um, we want you to truly understand that culture that you're in. We want you to have that immersive um, international experience. The second big bullet point of Dickinson, the second thing that makes us a little bit different is our commitment to sustainability. We, as you can see, are ranked number one in the country for sustainability. We have what's called a green campus and a green curriculum. And in terms of our green campus, we are carbon neutral, have been since 2019. Um, we made that pledge. We were excited to get there actually a year before our goal. Um, but we also have a college farm. It's located about six miles from campus, about 180 acres. It's an actual working um, farm. Uh, the produce grown there served in the dining hall, so you know what you're eating, you know where it came from, you understand how it was produced. Um, just kind of making sure that on a day-to-day -day living kind of level, you understand our impact on the environment. 
Now, the other side of sustainability for us is the curriculum. Like I said, we have a green curriculum. Um, it's not enough just to have an infrastructure that's green. We understand that sustainability is a question and a topic that your generation is going to have to talk about. So we have an obligation to educate you in it. Every single student at Dickinson is required to take class in sustainability. Now, that's not just environmental science, it's not just environmental studies. Um, sustainability for us boils down to this question, do you want the world to look like it looks like right now in 10 years? How about 20 years? How about 30 years? Most people's answer to that is no. Um, and so we look at sustainability from a broader perspective. It's not just about preserving the natural environment, but it's also about preserving human society. So when I say everyone has to take a class in sustainability, yes, it can be environmental science, but it, it can also be music history, looking at protest music. It can be political science, it can be foreign language. It's about understanding how to sustain the world and improve the world around us. And then the last thing that makes Dickinson Dickinson is an idea of this very engaged education. Um, we call it a useful education for the common good. It's about making sure that you are actually able to use the education you spent four years getting. Um, so to do that, we know that you know lectures don't really work all that well. So we don't do a lot of lectures. Instead, we do hands-on learning. It's all about small classes. We have a 91 student faculty ratio. It's all about heavy emphasis on internships. Um, almost 100% of our students will do an internship at some point as a Dickinsonian. Um, it's about making sure that you are doing something with your education when you graduate. I think this is an important, um, especially important statistic. 98% of our students are either employed, having an internship, or in grad school within a year of graduation. We're a top 10 Fulbright producer, a top producer of Peace Corps students. Our students are truly going out after engaging with this global, this sustainable education and doing something in the world around them. Now, how do you apply to Dickinson? Um, we are a common application school, no extra supplements. It's very straightforward. Um, we are also test blind this year. So if you can't take the SAT or the ACT, or if it's been a difficult uh, kind of environment in which to do so, we do not look at your scores. We've been test optional for about 25 years until this year when we chose to go test blind, kind of given everything that's going on in the world. Um, so even if you submit a score, I don't see it. We are truly committed to making sure that's not a part of the equation. Like I said, no additional supplements. We offer optional interviews. Here's an insider tip for admissions. If you see the word optional before interview, cross it out. Do an interview. Let us get to know you. Um, we offer uh, merit scholarships. Every single student who applies to Dickinson is considered for a merit scholarship, and we meet 100% of demonstrated financial need. Um, but like I said, at the end of the day, we are a very personal institution. We want to get to know you. I want to get to know you, so reach out to me. Um, here's my contact information. Please let me get to know you. Please let me be involved and helpful as part of the process. And thank you for coming tonight. Awesome. Um, up next, we have George Mason University. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Kelsey Poholsky, and I am joining you all from George Mason University. And we're really happy to be here with you all tonight, so thank you. Uh, so a little bit about George Mason University. Uh, we are a regional institution located right outside of Washington, D.C. And we have access to everything from the Shenandoah Valley to the metropolitan uh, cultural hub that is Washington, D.C. And we are offering our students a mid-sized suburban campus uh, in a place that's going to feel a little bit more like home to you. And sharing uh, some images of what this looks like. Um, we do have 25,000 full-time undergraduate students on Mason's campus. And we really look to connect these students with experiential learning opportunities in the region while they're a part of the Mason community. What's really important to us about the Mason community is first that we are a research one institution. So undergraduate research is occurring at all levels. We do offer graduate PhD programs and a law school, but undergraduate research is going to help you develop those skills that will make you a more marketable future graduate student or future physician and even for your career as well. Within the curriculum, we built in research as a really important part of our studies and the Honors College program available to applicants during the process is one way that you can really get ingrained in the research culture of Mason from the first semester. On our campus community, we are the second largest residential campus in Virginia. We do house about 6,300 students per semester. We do also have an off-campus going culture for our upperclassmen students. And so it's really flexible options based on what you would prefer. But when students are looking at campus, your housing is really central to the academic buildings and libraries and dining centers that you're going to need, as well as student support services. We offer student support in many forms, everything from writing and math centers, K-12 
counseling and psychological services, and also different ways to engage with the different cultures and backgrounds represented on our campus. Being one of the most diverse campuses uh, in the nation is really a hallmark of the Mason education. We have representation from all 50 states and 139 countries, so we are bringing together different backgrounds and life experiences, and a third of our population are first-gen college students, and I am one myself. So if you are looking for a community where mentorship uh, is available for first generation students or you're looking to really find that niche group of friends who share a passion or interest, I'm sure that you can find that at Mason. And we have over 460 clubs and organizations that represent all of these different passions, interests, and backgrounds. And so that's how really students get connected. You could also opt for club or intramural sports as a way to get involved. And we do offer Division I sports as well. I will say my favorite part of attending games at Mason uh, is going to see the number one ranked NCAA pep band, the Green Machine. I would really encourage you to go check them out on YouTube. They are the real draw to our sports games uh, and our students really find that they bring the Mason spirit uh, to all of our games. So I would definitely um, recommend that you check it out and know that the Green Machine is one way that we bring together inter interdisciplinary learning because it's not just for students who are majoring in music. We have engineers and artists become part of the green machine and again interdisciplinary learning is one way that we tie these all together for you so 80 different major programs and over 200 minors and concentrations means that you can pair together different interests during your mason education so things that you've always wanted to explore you can definitely make it happen and if you're a student who knows that they want to pursue a master's degree we offer 55 accelerated master's programs meaning that you can come to Mason for five years and leave with two degrees, both your bachelor's degree and your master's degree, saving you time and money in the long run. Talking about experiential learning, we mentioned research, internships are a real focal point of a Mason education. Being in the DC metro area, employers and government organizations are looking for interns during the semester, and Mason students are able to take advantage of our location by taking classes three days a week and pursuing an inter internship two days a week alongside of their studies. So you are really learning by doing through these internship experiences and gaining skills that you can list on your resume and use in your future career. We also have an average class size of 25 to 35 students. And this is important to highlight, being that we are a large campus community, it is reassuring to know that your in-class environment is going to feel collaborative and discussion-based and a little bit like the high school classroom that you're used to. We offer two ways to apply as a freshman to Mason, the common application and the Mason exclusive application. We do not give preference to either method. You choose what works best for you. We have an early action deadline, November 1st. It's a non-binding application. You still have the flexibility to consider other schools. This is the only application deadline to be considered for Mason's Honors College. So if you were that student looking for an added challenge, how can I get involved in research sooner? You really love interdisciplinary learning. The Honors College is a great way to have that experience at Mason, and you're still taking your major classes with the rest of the university population. November 1st is also automatic merit-based scholarship consideration, and notification begins mid-December, giving you more time in this process to consider your options. So we really encourage students to consider that November 1st early action deadline, the alternate being regular decision, January 15th. I would encourage you to stay connected with us, admissions information's on our website, also virtual guided tour, and videos to learn more about our community, both our dining, residence life, and even some faculty profiles to learn about who you will be learning from in the future. So thank you all for your time and interest, and I'd be happy to answer questions in the chat. Thank you, and now we have your Sinus College. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today as we take a look at Ursinus College. Uh, my name is Brendan Doherty. I am one of the admission counselors here. So a little background about Ursinus College. We are a small liberal arts institution located in Collegeville, Pennsylvania. So we're about 45 minutes outside of Center City, Philadelphia. Students have opportunities to get internships in the cities, uh, go down there and just kind of hang out for the day. We are one of the 45 colleges that change lives. Colleges that change lives as a nonprofit organization, takes a look at institutions across the nation and identifies ones with high levels of academics as well as strong student faculty relationships. So you guys know that when you come here, you're gonna get a great college education, 
Our classes are pretty tough. They're rigorous for a reason. We believe that pushing you guys now is really gonna help you out in the back end when you're looking for your different uh, career opportunities or heading off to get master's and doctoral degrees. And with the professors, um, they're seriously fantastic here. They definitely take an interest in our students. They wanna see you succeed. They wanna see you do well. They're gonna be with you every single step of the way. Um, they're really gonna be able to form awesome relationships with you guys. Because of our small size, average class size is about 15. So you're definitely not a number when you come here. Um, like I said, you're gonna to get to know the professors and uh, the kids who you're studying with. Now there's over 60 different courses of study here at our sinus with our most popular majors being biology, applied economics, psychology, health and exercise, exercise physiology, and then neuroscience and media communication studies is tied for fifth. Typically we see our students choose the double major or minor. Um, our academic advisors are really great at helping our students move through the classes so they can get out of here in four years. 60% of our students, I'm sorry, 30% of our students will choose to double major and 80% will choose to minor uh, during their time here at our sinus. So if that is something that you guys are interested in, um, I, I definitely encourage you to do that. Let's talk about some scholarships. So every accepted student is awarded a merit-based scholarship. Uh, our merit scholarships range between $21,000 a year all the way up to $40,000 a year. Uh, the Ursinus Scholarship, we take a look at your unweighted GPAs, we take a look at your extracurricular activities, uh, that's going to help us place you into that scholarship range. The Reverend Rice Memorial Scholarship is for $35,000 a year. That is given to students who can show us impacted issues of diversity. So if you guys are going out in your communities and enacting some sort of social change, you can self-nominate yourself during the application process. The Gateway Scholarship is also for $35,000 a year. And this is given to students who can um, who earn a 3.85 GPA or higher, or score to 1250 on their SAT, or score to 28 on their ACT. So that's a really great opportunity for those students. And then the Zacharias Honors is for $40,000 a year, and that is given to the top 5% of our applying class. Um, if you want to be considered for the Zac, you have to apply either early action or early decision. Now below those ones, we have another great list of specialty scholarships, the difference between those ones and the merit-based scholarships that you would have to apply for these specialty scholarships. There's a whole bunch of them, uh, ranging from creative writing, performing arts. Those are our two top specialty scholarships. You don't have to be in that major to be considered for that. If you are a creative writer on your own and you enjoy um, creative writing, but you wanna be a biology major, we definitely encourage you to apply for that. And then the ones below the uh, two top specialty scholarships, they all range in different, different types, um, whether that be region-based, um, diversity-based, leadership-based, community service-based, there's really great opportunities for you guys to earn some money. All right, so with our campus life, uh, our campus life is awesome. Uh, we have a four-year residency requirement. We believe that getting you guys to stay on campus for all four years gets you more engaged in your academics, your clubs and organizations, um, your athletics if you're a student athlete. But with that, we also will guarantee you student uh, housing. We want you to be here on campus, so we're gonna make sure that you have a place to stay. You can, uh, as a first year student, you'll be placed in one of our two first year dorms. Um, after that, you can choose to move into one of our upperclassmen dorms, whether that be uh, our upperclassmen dorms as singles, doubles, and triples. We have suite style dorms. And then we also do own 22 Victorian style houses that line our main street. They're literally right across the street. You can see them from campus. This is a really cool option for you guys to move off campus, but still stay within that uh, housing requirement. There are over 100 clubs and organizations to get involved in whether that be interest-related clubs, major-related clubs, fraternities and sororities, um, club sports, intramural sports, if you name it, we basically have it. The best part is that if there is something that you want to continue that you're doing right now uh, that we don't offer, we encourage you to start the club. We love to see our, our community grow. We love to see our campus life get better. Uh, so we encourage students to start the clubs. Now to graduate from our sinus college, you have to complete what we call our experiential learning project. That's where you choose from one of six different options. It's either internship, study abroad, student research, creative project, student teaching, or uh, civic engagement. So we want you to get some sort of hands-on experience before you head out into the real world. Um, where we require you to complete one, typically students do two or three, and you can start these as early as your second semester here. So you basically can go through four years of your or sinus career uh, getting this hands-on experience. Now with our athletics, we are a division three school. We compete in the Centennial Conference. Uh, we have over 25 varsity sports teams for you guys to choose from. Um, so what's next? Please apply. We'd love to see you guys apply free on the Common App and the Coalition App. 
Uh, we have three different uh, application types for you guys to choose from. Um, we are open, so please come visit us. We'd love to see you on campus. It'd be awesome for you guys to take a tour. Uh, and then contact me. Here's my contact information. I want to hear from you guys. Just to say what's up, whatever it is, please contact me. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Brennan. Up next, we have Virginia State U. Hello, everyone. Um, I am All right, hello everyone. My name is Jaylen Thomas. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Virginia State University. Um, so this is a beautiful picture of our campus located in Petersburg, Virginia, uh, about 30 minutes south of Richmond, two hours south of DC, um, 236 acres, gorgeous in every season. Um, I have some contact info down there, but I also put it in the chat. Um, so let's get started. I have a quick video uh, to show you all. You have the power right now to transform your life through education and a commitment to learn. You have the power right now to build a life you love through preparation, hard work, and dedication. You have the power right now to shape your life. No matter how hard it's been, you can always begin again. Do something that your future self will thank you for. Come to Virginia State University, a transformative experience. All right, so I'm already on the next slide, but I did want to cover the video really quickly. Um, so if you paid close attention, each statement began with you have the power right now. And I think that uh, holds a lot of meaning with everything going on in the world today. Uh, we don't know what each of us are facing at home. Um, so we are here to help you along the way. Uh, we want to equip you with the tools that you'll need to be successful while at Virginia State. Um, and then once you uh, go off into the workforce. So let's jump into some quick info. Um, I won't read it verbatim, uh, but this is simply speaking to the family aspect that we have here at Virginia State University. Um, that 13 to 1 is something that I like to really talk about because uh, you have the ability to build a relationship and a rapport uh, with your professor. So you feel comfortable asking for help if you need any extra assistance. Um, you'll recognize and see familiar faces in the classroom, especially once you jump into your department core. Uh, because you'll be with them pretty much from your freshman year. Uh, but you'll definitely feel comfortable and safe on our campus. Like I said, 236 acres, average around 4,300 students. Sorry, 4,300 students. Um, so it's a medium-sized school. Um, very, Like I said, very family-oriented. Um, and we have a lot to offer while you're here on campus. So let's jump into that. Um, we are a Division II school. Uh, we are a part of the CIAA conference. Um, so these sporting events that we host on campus are a lot of fun, filled with a lot of energy. Um, the Trojan Explosion, uh, Trojan Explosion Band um, are at our uh, sporting events, especially basketball and football. If not the full band, then we have our pep band. You see dancers, there's halftime performances, um, but we have the typical sports, basketball, football, uh, baseball, softball, track and field, cross country. Um, we also have an active divine nine. Um, so if you're interested in joining Greek life, you have that option here at Virginia State as well. Uh, one thing I like to add on to that is discretion because that's very, very important uh, when joining those Greek organizations. And if you're not interested in necessarily going to the sporting events, um, we have over 90 clubs and organizations on our campus. Um, and that's catered to acting, singing, dancing, uh, written word, poetry, modeling, um, anything that you can think of. Um, we have uh, clubs that are dedicated towards majors as well. So there's mass comm, there's a mathematics club. So if you're more focused on academics, but I just encourage you to get involved in whatever organization you um, are interested in. And if it's something that we don't have, you also have the opportunity to start that club or organization on campus. Um, so if you also want to experience some cultures outside of campus and different parts of the world, you have the opportunity to study abroad. Um, we have over 130 study abroad programs that are offered. Um, throughout the school year. We typically host a passport day, uh, but seeing how we are not on campus, that won't be happening. Um, but definitely you still have that opportunity. So a lot to do. Um, we also have activity hour. Um, so it's just there. that activity hour is to break up the monotony of the day. Uh, instead of just going to class, doing homework, getting something to eat, doing it again, doing it again. Um, we have activity hour and different things throughout the school year, um, just so that you can have fun, get to know each other, grow, learn, and mature. So we will move on to why you essentially came to school, and that is to pursue uh, an education and get your degree. Um, so we have six academic colleges. Um, I don't want to list every single major, um, plus it's a lot to cover, but all of this um, information is on our website, vsu.edu. 
uh, but under our College of Agriculture. Um, if you're interested in family consumer science or fashion merchandising at Virginia State, uh, it's entitled Textile Apparel Merchandising Management. I have to say that very slowly, otherwise uh, it'll be a tongue twister. Um, and our Reginald F. Lewis College of Business, uh, it's been nationally recognized. So uh, it's a great program. It is challenging, um, but it challenges you in the best way possible so that you are prepared for what you'll be experiencing out in the uh, workforce. Um, it also has an entrepreneurship program built within the department as well. And it also has the highest accreditation that a school of business can have. Um, our College of Education, our educators are very, very important right now, especially with the pandemic going on. Um, so we have a great education program. I myself uh, took an education course while attending Virginia State and I almost switched my major. Um, that's how much I enjoyed the program. So the professors in each of these colleges are very hands-on. Um, they care about you. Um, as I previously mentioned, we're not that large of a school. So your professors will know you by name. Um, so like I said, you'll be comfortable uh, going to class. You'll feel more inclined uh, to get to your class because you're going to enjoy the uh, topics that will, uh, that will be discussed. Uh, they make it very interactive. Um, for our future engineers, we have mechanical engineering, uh, which is very popular. Um, in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. So this all sounds expensive, um, but you have your tuition rates here for in-state and out-of-state. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't have that money in my account, so let's figure out how we can pay for that. Um, here you have our honors, and that will begin the requirements for our merit-based scholarships, and these are averages, not requirements. So we're looking holistically. We accept students above and below all of the, the GPA, SAT, and ACT. We are also, well, we've always been test optional. So if you have a 3.0 or above, you have the option not to submit test scores. Um, but we've also expanded that due to COVID-19. Um, if you fall below that GPA, you can still submit your transcript and your uh, application, which is free. Our application is free, doesn't take long to do, um, and still receive a decision from us. And that would be our minimum GPA. So these are our merit-based scholarships that we offer through the admissions process. Um, you are automatically considered for these scholarships. So that means you don't have to submit anything additional once you've submitted the documents, uh, we will review and say, hey, this person is eligible for the Provo Scholarship and award you those funds. Um, as it stands for today, uh, the GPA and test scores are both required to be eligible. Um, that very much so could change depending on College Board and ACT. Um, kind of breezing through very quickly. Um, but those are our merit-based scholarships. We also offer other scholarships that are outside of the admissions process. Um, a lot of these are through your departments. Um, and many of these are just a simple Google research. There's definitely a lot of money out there for you all uh, to decrease that out-of-pocket cost. So uh, definitely do your research um, so that we are not graduating with so much debt. So the application, as I previously mentioned, is free. Um, that is the link that you will use to apply. Um, the automatic scholarship was the uh, merit-based scholarships that I previously mentioned. Um, that pretty much covers it. I know I kind of breezed through very, very quickly, but hopefully you all got that. Um, I'll drop my contact info um, in the chat if you all have any questions at all. Thank you. Great, last but not least, we have Piedmont College. Awesome. Hello, hello. Thank you guys for joining us today. Let me pull this up real quick. Uh, my name is Nikki Blanchard. I am one of our admissions advisors here at Piedmont College. And we'll go ahead and get started. So just at a quick glance, um, we are located in Northeast Georgia. So the big white um, spot on our map there, we're up in the um, real foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Um, we are a small private liberal arts school founded in 1897. So we're one of the oldest private colleges in the state of Georgia. We have four schools within our college. We have our School of Nursing and Health Sciences. So we have one of the top five nursing programs in the state of Georgia. We also have healthcare administration, exercise and sports science, athletic training, and um, other majors like that. We have our Walker School of Business. So they have concentrations in accounting, finance, data analytics, um, global operations and logistics. And um, our School of Education has early childhood, middle grades, um, secondary education, and then we also have our School of Arts and Sciences that houses everything else um, from art, theater, and music to religion, um, forensic science, and all kinds of things. Um, we also have over 49 clubs and organizations on campus, including Greek Life that was introduced about three years ago. Um, we have 21 sports teams um, in the Div Division Three athletics in the NCAA. 
And then um, we're definitely on the smaller scale of schools. We average about 11 to 1200 students in our undergrad programs. So our student to faculty ratio is 11 to one. Average classes are about 12 to 13 students. So this is our big news for next year. We are actually becoming Piedmont University in April. So all of those schools I mentioned previously are gonna become colleges. We're getting a new logo. All this rebranding is exciting. Um, and you can kind of see, we also have quite a few renovation projects going on around campus. So we're definitely growing, but maintaining that small college feel. A little bit about Res Life. Um, we do offer suite style and apartment style housing. Typically freshman year is gonna be the only year you have a roommate. Um, we do have um, the two twin beds, a full size fridge, a microwave, closet space and desk areas available in all of our residence halls. There is free laundry available in each residence hall as well. Um, and they definitely keep campus lively for you guys. Since we are kind of up in the North Georgia mountains, it is a small, quiet little town, about an hour and a half from Atlanta. So there's always sporting events, concerts, um, theater performances, and even little small events happening around campus at all, or all the time. Let's see. So let's talk about admissions real quick. Um, we do have a free application all the time. You can do that either on our website or through the Common App, either way. Um, you can see on the screen, these are typically what we would like to see for admissions and then um, kind of our freshman average for this past year. Now, these are just what we would like to see. We do look at every student holistically. So if you're just below a 3.0 or just below a 20 on the ACT, not a problem. You'll probably be just fine. Um, but we do look at every student individually. One thing to note is we have gone test optional for the fall of 2021, but we are strongly encouraging them because they're just going to hopefully increase your scholarship amount. Um, and we do offer a lot of merit based scholarships just based on your GPA and test scores. So just a little bit about financial aid, um, usually around 97% of all of our students get some kind of institutional aid through us. Majority of those are gonna be based on our um, merit scholarships, which I mentioned before with your GPA and test scores. Um, we also accept any other federal or need-based aid um, through the FAFSA. We usually also have an out-of-state grant um, and our tuition is not different. We have the same tuition in-state and out-of-state. Um, and like I mentioned before, we're D3, so we don't offer athletic scholarships, but we try to make up for it with those merit-based scholarships we offer. Um, we do have certain departmental scholarships that you can apply for separately, like our fine arts department. And even just this past year, we gave out over $12.5 million in scholarships. So our, um, I'm going to ask you guys to come visit us, whether it's in person or um, virtually. We do offer in-person campus tours Monday through Friday, anytime between 9 and 3. You can go on our website and schedule that for whatever is going to work for you. Um, in those tours, they are private, so it's just you and whoever you wanna bring with you. It includes a meeting one-on-one -on -one with an admissions advisor, a financial aid advisor, a professor in whatever you're looking to study, and then a coach if you are looking to play a sport in college. Um, and they are conducted by one of our student tour guides, so they can definitely give you the student perspective on things. And then we also have a remote option in case you're not able to come down to Georgia um, it's basically the same exact layout, just virtually. So we do that uh, typically once a day as well. And then I just want to thank you guys so much for your time tonight. Um, please feel free to reach out for uh, any questions you guys may have. We have just our general undergraduate admissions office information, as well as my contact info. Um, I am the advisor for the Virginia State area. And always follow us on Instagram to see what's going on around campus. Thank you so much. Thank you so much panelists and also thank you students for joining us. Um, when you close the window, there will be a quick four question survey. We would love any feedback you may have and please sign up for more sessions on strivescan.com slash Virginia. Also, all sessions will be recorded and available in about a week on Strivescan, which is the same place that you registered. So once again, thank you and have a good rest of your evening.